and welcome back to the next session of Surveyors of the Digital World, the Solid State Glacier, a Digimon Digital Adventures tabletop game. Okay, you guys are in it. The last session began with you guys just having overcome an ice dungeon that was serving as the locking mechanism on a prison deep beneath the earth for a creature known as the Concept of Chaos. After resting for a bit, after completing that puzzle, block, tunnel, ice, mess of a situation, you guys descended down into where the prison is, finding it deeply locked in darkness that seemed to resist light. A pair of guardians in the darkness quizzed you as to why you were there, and after being convinced you were trying to help keep the concept sealed away, they allowed inspection of the barrier. Checking the barrier out revealed that it was partially cracked already from previous reshapings of the glacier carried out by the ancient above, and that probably this one was going to be it for it. Zen, with her computer knowledge, stepped up to the task of trying to fix up the barrier and resisted the temptation of the concept, which reached out to her through her device, choosing instead to put as good of a seal on the barrier as she could, reinforcing it quite well. The concept did manage to strike out at Zen, hitting her with that same infection that had hit her at Inumon beforehand. But thanks to the Digmon on site, that infection was purified by it. This used up all of the energy the Digmon had, though, which meant it just went, you know, empty suit of armor. Inukabemon picked it up and is keeping it with it. This is a buddy now. You guys returned to the surface of Solid State Glacier, just in time to witness a battle breaking out between three great figures. The Lord of the Glacier, right here, gigantic white tiger creature, is in combat with the ancient, a truly massive, towering over the mountain, amongst the mountains, not over the tallest of them, giant, thick furred creature that's stomping around, swinging its head. The size difference is that this. The Lord of the Glacier, the last time you met it, uh, you guys were able to stand, rest easily between its paws sitting on the ground while it was sleeping. This thing is about the size of the ancient head. It has jumped onto the ancient head and is clawing away at it, but each time the ancient moves, it's with enough force to throw the Lord of the Glacier. The other part of the battle is this black armored knight like Digimon that is flying through the air swing a large sword at the end as well. It seems like the Lord of the Glacier and this knight have teamed up to try and defeat, destroy the Ancient. We don't know what they're up to, but they are fighting it, and it is the battle to end all battles around here. The entire area is shaking every time the Ancient stops, cracks run through the earth. Where you are right now is incredibly precarious, and it's pretty clear that if this battle between them all going for long enough in this location, even with Zen's extra efforts, the concept of chaos is definitely going to be set free. So, thanks to Zen's efforts, I am setting the timer at one hour. In one hour from now, the Ancients will break free. What do you do? Uh, is that an hour of game time? Or an, an hour, hour of... of real time right now. The clock is ticking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we better get going, huh? Boy, howdy. Okay, um... Hmm. That's a big the sheep. Most pressing thing <laughs> right now <laughs> is that the ground around you guys is cracking as tremors run through it. You guys are being Ooh. unbalanced and thrown around. You are pretty much directly in this situation right now. It's very dangerous. Um, I feel like everyone should get as big as possible, and then we should move. Yeah, I think yeah that moment. might be good, <laughs> until we can figure out how to sort of give this thing the old one. The old one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve! Yes, maybe additional numbers would be good. Baku, it's time to uh, be a big boy now. Yeah, I'm gonna... Bait that thing up. 
<laughs> yeah, Mom's just oh. like, let me at him, let's go! Yeah. Mm, if you say so, dear. <laughs> All right, who is digivolving? Uh, Gamon's looking at Derek like, let me at him, let's go, let's go! Uh, everyone, I guess, right? <laughs> All right, yeah. everyone yeah. is jumping up to the ultimate level. Yep. Gamon's going straight to Mac Gamon, or oh, Mac right. Galgamon, rather. Uh, is Inukabemon digivolving? I would think so. Fair is enough. it easier for Inukabemon to move in this form or in his ultimate form? Well, he's only on two legs in his ultimate form, which, you know, it really depends on how earthquake he is. <laughs> like, a four-legged okay, I thing... just meant, like, yeah. mechanically, if we have to move quickly. But uh, I think, yeah, probably Digivolving is. Yeah, uh, Mac Ogamon's a lot faster than anything else on this evolutionary I think tree. Yanjimon <laughs> would feel the most comfortable carrying Chiyoko because she's very fragile. <laughs> She'll cling on to him. Yeah, I will yeah, check I her not. Wondering about the plan for Inukabemon. I'm not sure Nuri Kabemon can move as well as the other four. I mean, he's got more movement than the other four. <laughs> he's Expand deceptively dog. fast. Still Fair pretty enough. slow for an ultimate, but deceptively fast. All right. That's Everyone the biggest boy. Up. Biggest boy is here. Uh, still, did you like drop the Digimon and then nope, pick it up? Nope, still in the mouth. Digivolved? Still in the mouth as you Okay. Well, you like, haven't swallowed this one, so it's not actually inside your body. Nope, it's just in the mouth. Okay, um, Everyone. Bergamon's definitely going full as well. Yep. Alright, everyone is up. What are we doing, folks? I like, like, quick, everyone, get as big as possible. Neandramon over here, like, uh, okay, okay, that's pretty big, I guess. It's got bigger! Yeah, it's bigger! bigger. <laughs> Neandramon is bigger than Salmon. Probably try and get some high ground or something, right? Yeah, should probably step back a little bit. Um, yeah. Mac Gagamon's just gonna start picking people up with his right. single hands. Is there a way for me to like indicate a part of this map? Um, uh, you, can you, like my you can ping it. Like that? Oh, there yes. we go. That's a mountaintop. Uh this area is more of the flat plane moment. The higher peaks are over here and down towards here. Oh, okay. Yeah. We should get the high ground. Probably. Yeah, that's kind of Zen's idea. Or uh, Zen's going to second that motion. All right, uh, which direction are you heading? Right up here, right? Yeah. Thoughts and prayers? <laughs> Sounds good to me. I think, uh, uh, as far as yep. I, I'm... I have no... Uh, Plan. Zen has no plan other than get somewhere high up, get a better vantage point. Uh, if they come closer, we can probably be better angled for striking distance since they're this fucking huge. All right, as you guys are getting ready and making this plan, the cracks in the ground are beginning to widen, and you can see that a fissure is opening, heading towards you guys. It's trying to move quick. Yeah. Quick. How fast is Zen? Uh, Zen immediately jumps on. On yep. board. All right. Scooped up. The sorcery mon you note has also just clung on to Nuri Kabemon. <laughs> <laughs> Big boy strats. All right. So who's Mac Galgamon lifting and carrying? Um, who still needs a ride? Oh, Derek, is obviously more up with uh, yeah. I think everyone's basically so riding their own back Digimon. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, okay. Mac Agumon will just grab Derek then. Yoink! Alright. Mac Agumon grabs Derek. Where do you go? Um, we were going probably up here, right? Okay. Go ahead. Shoo! 
Yeah, how how, right. how steep is that? Is that like? Well, Mark Galgamon has. Oh well, uh, yeah. Mark Galgamon doesn't have flight. None of you. Have I don't flight. have flight, but I do have. Um, no, I don't have jump anymore e- either. Yeah, you just had. I say you. You literally are using like a dash move to get extra motion because you have yeah, a weird little jump. Yeah, using okay. using box spirals to get more movement. <laughs> Uh, give me an agility check for Mark Galgamon carrying Derek up the mountainside. Please don't okay. drop me. Agility, that is... Seven? Uh, it's a ram check. Oh, okay. Um, my ram is three. Yep. So, 3d6 plus three? Mm-hmm. Okay. Praying not to drop you. Fourteen. Uh, you set off jumping and running up to this mountainside. It's steep, but with the natural boost and such. Mark Algamon can't maintain significant flight, but it helps you make these jumps and just begin yeah. climbing and running your way up there. Yeah. But it's as like you're a- going up, the side of the mountain is also shifting and a wave of snow races down. Uh, do you have a way to break through this wave of snow as it's come down towards you? Because you're not able to going to be able to run around it or dodge around. Um, I could try and attack through it. Sure. Okay. What are you going to do? Um. Um, let me take a look at my attacks real quick. In the meantime, what are you others doing? Um, around around she's coming curious. Fairy Dramon's just can Fairy Dramon pick up Stella and just jump? Sure. Got that jumper. Got his big um kind of like hover wing. Might do howling cannon because it's like a my blast some of it out of the way. That or set off an avalanche. I'm not sure. <laughs> Sound. Wow. Challenge. Yeah. Uh Oh, Fairy Dramon, if you're yeah, ascending this as well, it's still too tall to, like, one jump your way up there, but mm-hmm. you can make a ram check as well, which will go a little easier on you. You've got a movement type that's helping you out here. In the meantime, Mark Galgamon, you are trying to howling cannon your way through this uh, avalanche going on. Yeah. So give me just an attack roll, and we'll see how many accuracy you can get. Okay, an attack roll. I've got nine dice for this. All right, Fairy Dramon. Uh, it's going to take you a little bit of time, so you and Stella are indisposed for a minute, but you are confidently jumping your way up. Okay. So go ahead and just put yourself on the mountainside out of the way. Um, and the greater sign goes towards the five or away from the five? To the five. To the five. I will remember this eventually. I, this is like third grade math. and I Don't worry. Next campaign, you'll have it down. The alligator eats the bigger number. Yeah. Um. Oh my God. No, I did it wrong. Okay. Two sixes. Oh, but I can reroll all oh, those ones and twos. You had the towards. Can you reroll yeah. ones and twos? Do you have overkill? I have. Oh, I thought I had overkill. Oh yeah, you do. You yeah, do, you do. I do have overkill. Huge power yeah. and overkill. So one, two. I can roll two of those. Two d six. Other way this time. No, okay. Two successes. Two successes. So as the avalanche is going down, you blast your way through it, but it only carves out a little bit ahead of you, and more of it still rushes around. Uh, You struggle your way through it, but a boulder falling through it catches you all the same. Three Uh, uh, damage off of that, just slamming into you as you face tank it. How much damage? Three. Okay. We can, we can but live with you've me. got Derek with you, and Derek is being kept safe. And- yeah, I'm holding him. I've got him tucked into the wrestling belt. Fairy Dramon has Stella. <laughs> what about the rest of you guys? Um, um, I wrestling. realize that Clive doesn't actually have flight. Why didn't I put flight on Clive? Why have I done this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but he can fly. I'm. St- what if I... Hmm. Wait, he, what do you mean he can he can fly but he doesn't have what? He doesn't have like he has wing. I drew him with wings, but oh, I didn't I... give him the flight ability. <laughs> oh, like that. Oh, sisters. <laughs> <laughs> we made a grave miscalculation. 
Um, I I've done that maybe. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Um, Jerka is just like maybe we can hit your item, Vajraman. He's very large. <laughs> uh, yeah, Clive's gonna try to grab onto Vajraman. I. Right. Oh, I'm the very large. Yeah, he will pick him up and like shoot him up onto his back. I'm so Thank you. <laughs> I'm just gonna start trying to climb the mountain. I got grabby hands on like my normal forms. Jim is just gonna like climb. cling on. It's just like thanks. I made a mistake. This dog has hands now. He can rock climb. Not only does Clive feel stupid, but Maddie feels stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, in your defense, in the old model, you did get like one free form of movement, and that went away in the update. Yeah. So, well, like, you got a one count on that. And oh, right, because Fly takes two. But yeah. <laughs> okay, so Vajramon, you have three passengers on you. What are you doing about this situation? Um, I guess he's gonna try and scale his, like, um, I mean, like, his, like, big hoofed feet are probably not ideal for this sort of thing, but he does have two big swords that he can use to, like, stab him in the So just go stab your sword into the ground and kind of climb your way up there with that. Yeah, yeah. Like okay. extremely violent ski poles. Uh, give us Someone a... register this lad in the Winter Olympics. Give us a CP check, because uh, this is more a body than agility situation you're making yourself here. Uh, okay. So, 3d6 plus 3. 3 All right, that's pretty solid. Uh, Vajramon begins stabbing into the mountain. Ascent. This is slower than the others by a notable amount, so you're not doing too well, but with the others forwarding ahead and Mark Galgamon basically tanking the way through and exploding part of that avalanche, you get in line behind Mark Galgamon, and basically there's a gap in the wave of snow that you manage to force your way up through. It's taking a minute, but you are on your way up to this higher ground. Nuri Kabemon with Zen, Digmon, and Sorcery. I mean, I think I'm just going to use the fact that I have hands in this form to help me climb up the side of a mountain. Because <laughs> I'm, right. I'm much less log-shaped like this. What All right, of... uh, CPU check for you as well. 3D6 plus CPU. Yep. Which is also three, because that's just kind of what Ultimate's got, mostly. Not as good. As you are setting to ascend, it's just before you reach the ground there, there's the cracking of the ground behind you widens up, and a chasm widens up where you guys all were standing behind. Sorshumon tries to cast a spell to, like, put a sheet of ice over it, but the ice cracks, and drops in, they can't create enough bridge this gap any and you sink down you manage to grab the edges of it because you're such a wide lad, but you are kind of stuck at the bottom of the mountain right now in this not widening any further right now but this chasm has opened and proving difficult to ascend and climb higher up from Okay, I have one question Yep. What are the yeeting rules again? Throwing. <laughs> if it's for not throwing with damage, your CP stat is the range that you can throw. Hmm. That's not very far at all. It's not, because you have to be gentle with them to not hurt them. If it was damaging, it'd be your body stat as the range. That would be a bit further. That would be quite a bit further. But I also might explode someone if I tried that. 
I'm going to test it. I'm going to mm-hmm. throw Digmon up. All right. Uh, where are you throwing Digmon to? Like, up next to Mont Galgamon and stuff. Not at Mont Galgamon, but up there. I don't think the mountain is nine tiles short. It's taller than Aww. that. That would have been fun, though. <laughs> would have been fun, but... Uh... I mean, I said, I said, I'm, tr- I said, I'm trying it. Like, you think, you think he's right. trying it because he knows he can make the throw? I don't think so. Uh, throwing <laughs> rules for throwing. Character forcibly throwing another number of units. Throw can be performed as a bind action between two willing parties. Or like, well, Digmon's neither willing nor unwilling. It's just kind of. A, he's more of a, a rock than a right Digimon now. at this point. Okay. So, uh, let's see. Throw them. Character takes damage equal to the damage stat of the thrower reduced by their stat. Uh, your damage is three, and the Digmon has an armor that is much higher than three. Oh yeah, my damage stat's baby stat. Unless I switch it. I'm a soft boy. All right, and so this Digmon just takes one point of damage as it gets thrown up. Uh, Vatramon, you are, like, making your climb. You, as, just as you sink one of your swords into rock, there's a slam just above you, just a little bit further up above you, and the Digmon j- just got thrown in there, just kind of starts ragdolling down the cliff towards you. Oh, God. <laughs> what do you do? Oh, no. Listen, I I don't play characters that make good ideas. Um, alright. Can he, like, use one of his swords to, like, knock it aside so it doesn't, like, tumble directly into them? So you're just gonna brush it aside so it can keep falling? Yeah. Alright, that's easy enough. If anyone's just coming down, you just kind of pull out one of your swords, and you just divert it so that it goes rolling off to the side further down the mountainside. <laughs> this was a good play. Nurikawimon's okay. just gonna look like questioning me, questioningly at Zen, like... Can it look at Zen, considering where's Zen pulling onto it? On its back? That's a good question. Yeah. On the back? Yeah. Okay, and he just kind of like tilts his head like kind of trying to look towards Zen, like... I'm sorry, boy. I know you liked him. (laughs) There's a loud clashing sound. And if you turn around to look at it, you can see that the Lord of the Glacier has slammed a claw that's glowing brilliant white against one of the giant horns of the Ancient. And there's sparks flying and grinding. The Ancient's horns glow too, and it's a big burst of force, and the Lord of Glacier goes flying, basically like over the, hor- well not over the horizon, but over the mountain down here and out of sight for a second. Oh no, oh no, oh, that's bad, that's really bad! I'm sure he's fine. <laughs> the Knightly One flies in, swings up its sword, hits the Ancient right underneath the chin as it's sending lord flying the ancient rears up raises up it like raises kind of onto back legs it's got many legs but it raises at least the front four that are kicking the air then it slams them all down there is shock wave of force that pulses through the entire area uh the mountains quaking mac algamon you have pushed up to the top freedramon you are uh, jumps from the top is doing well Vajramon, I need you to make a check to keep where your position is at be a straight body check again. Okay. Just as a reference point, where is the uh, concept of chaos and like underground where like in relation to where the ancient is? I'm not entirely sure where it is underground, but you're gonna guess if you went right down on this map, it would be somewhere in this map. Somewhere closer to this area. Ah, lovely. Okay, so we just got to keep it away from there. Okay. Well, I mean, fissures are opening up in the ground along here already. Like, when Nurikabemon is basically falling apart already. Hmm. Okay, I rolled another 16. 
Okay, uh, you maintain your climb against the shaking and grimly ascending upwards. Virgin you are basically at the top now. Uh, let's Sorcery Mon is going to use their Conjurer ability to create a bunch of kind of like weirdly shaped ice blocks with holes in them that you kind of like not, you'd still slide through them, but if you stick your arm through them, you can basically hold onto it. And they are trying to maintain these blocks, give some amount of handholds for Nuri Kabeon to hold yourself up. And Nuri Kabeon, you're just able to grab the bottommost one that Solstrom One has created as the fissure around you guys widens out and your legs are dangling. Digmon tumbles into the abyss. No! no! Rip. F in the chat for <laughs> Digmon. Uh, uh, dicks out for Digmon. He's fine. I don't know about that one. He's going to hit the ground and take one damage. He's a Digmon. Zen, Zen feels sad. Digmon saved right. Is there anything that can be done to further assist Nuri Kabemon's Zen? Uh, uh, I don't know if there's much Zen can do at the moment to help. Uh, can I bolster? I mean, that's giving support and such, but Nurukabemon would then need to be doing something to benefit from that. That's true. Nurukabemon, do you have anything in mind that you can do in this situation? You know, I'm looking at the things Nurukabemon can do. <laughs> there mm -hmm. aren't a ton of them. Uh... Good big boy. I mean... Uh does okay. Sorcery Mon have any ideas, or did he just uh, okay. use his turn to make those ice holes? Yeah, Sorcery Mon's created a bunch of weirdly shaped ice blocks you can kind of climb on that are leading up to the side of the mountain. Okay. And Nurikabu Mon's hanging on to the bottommost one of these right now because there's no more ground beneath you. Hmm. And how far around me is there no more ground around me? Uh, what sort of distance are you trying to use? I'm just wondering, like, is it just, like, a pit, like, a big distance all around, or? It's a fair-sized pit around, yeah. Hmm. I mean, you're still close to the side, so, like, if you made a jump, you could angle yourself towards it, but you're going to fall for a bit before you catch stone. And how bad is it towards the other guy? Towards which guy? The big mountain man. Is there uh, more ground over there? There's ground, but it's like cracked and broken up, and some parts of it are sinking, and some parts of it are jutting up, and so forth. Because there's obviously enough ground for it to stand. Oh, this thing's like quite a few. This is a large distance between you guys. <sighs> It's fine. I want to point out, this is not a small distance. Okay, I'm just going to make it my way towards the... I'm, I'm going to try and climb the thing just to get towards the wall again. Okay. Uh, using anything in specific to help you climb? I mean, I have thumbs, but that's about it. I don't really... <laughs> I would say most of my things are just rush. being... I, I could. That's mostly just... Charge attack. Running forward with a bunch of bulk, though. Like, pretty much everything Nurikabamon has going for him is that he is a large, bulky boy. Yeah, it's not a lot of room for agility situation. Well, in your situation. So, yeah, it's mostly just trying to climb up using his big muscles. All right. Yeah, see if you check for Nurikabamon trying to ascend this situation. Firadron has made it to the top. Vajraman is closing in on the very top now. Okay, let's see if this is an okay roll. You said CPU, right? Yep. It's not very good. I think it's worse by one. Uh. Mm -hmm. 
You did ask Question. if you could bolster, but I don't <laughs> Can uh can I can Fieri German assist by uh, making a very tasty burger at the top of the mountain? <laughs> Scooby Doo physics? Scooby Doo physics. <laughs> the power yeah. of motivation. So you're just gonna try and create the most motivational burger in the world for this. Yeah. Alright. Yeah, come on, unlocked flight. <laughs> You set up the top of the mountain, you see this entire situation, you see Nurikabumon needs some assistance. Uh, you're going to make a bit check to make the tastiest burger that you're just going to like hold it out and hope Nurikabumon smells it and comes running? Yep. The tastiest burger in the world. Alright. So that's 3d6 plus bit? Yep. If you get more than a 15, I will give, uh, okay, you got more than 20, that's what I'm say. Uh, I'm going to give you two dice re-rolls for that, so you can re-roll that one and that two. Okay. So basically temporary yeah. inspiration. So roll a 2d6, and we'll see if you can improve your situation. Somewhat. <laughs> uh, okay, so you rolled a 6 plus 5 plus 3, so that is 14 this time. Uh, scrambling with the ice situation, Sorcery Mon shifting about the conjured ice box as best they can. You manage to get to the base of the mountain, and that burger smell is motivating you. you start to climb, but it is slow going to Rukabimon there. Nonetheless, Rukabimon is ascending. Must get Berg. A deep feline uh, howl echoes out across the ice as the Lord of the Glacier races back, leaping to the top of this mountain, and then doing this crazy kind of flying, spinning torpedo claw move that slams into the side of the ancient. The ancient reels around, stops in this direction. You see more force and cracks go in that direction, and a mountain just off screen up to here. This kind of jagged crack reaches up to the top of it, and part of it sags inwards. What are you guys doing? There are 31 minutes left on the clock. Oh, oh, we've spent half half of our time climbing a mountain. We've spent half of our time climbing a mountain. Can uh, can Clive look for like like can e either Eleanor or Clive make some kind of perception check? Whichever one of them is going to have better time doing that. What are you looking for? Looking for some kind of weakness in the ice to explo uh, exploit. Um, I'm thinking that if we can make the ancients slip into another slip into another direction, and just slide it down the ice. Why don't we take the an ancient and put it <laughs> somewhere, it somewhere else? else. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, I'm gonna take a wild. Well, let's check Yanjmon's. It is five, which is what you use for perception. Eleanor's perception is nine. All right, so I'll, Eleanor's going to do that perception check then. Okay, um, so Zadramon okay. is cresting up towards the top of this area. This area of the mountain's pretty flat top, and it's while the climb was treacherous, it seems like there's a stable, stable stone disc up here that you guys are able to settle on safely for the moment. As Vajramon is cresting the peak, Eleanor looks out, looking for any sort of advantage. That's a willpower plus perception, right? Yep. All right. Willpower is very much about keeping your focus and remaining calm in a tense situation, so it's fitting. Nice. Ow. Oh, hey, that's, a, that's another critical. Yeah. Fuck. Well, uh, a critical is uh, triple six or triple one. Oh, okay, never. That's an almost yeah. critical. That would be a, that would be a critical. crit if it was like a punching check where they're all successes. But... Yeah. Uh, you note as that you watch out, you get a bit of an angle as some of the ground continues to crack and sag. Here, you get an actual look through the clouds of snow that are swirling up around the stomping feet. That when the ancient stomps down, it just like sinks a foot through the ground. It's like it's standing 
foot underneath the ground. But then when it brings another one up, it sets the foot on the same broken ground. But the foot seems supported there at the same time. It kind of looks like it's got some sort of special ability to stand on snow, even for the fact that snow can't support anything. There's something special keeping it in place that allows it to move through and around snow and ice. Mm -hmm. uh, you do note that the cracks and fissures on the north side are deepening now as the Black Knight is circling around to this side and a lot of lace here is swinging around this side as well which means they're keeping more of the destructive intent flowing northwards. But again, when they both hit at the same time, the anxious takes a step back, and as it steps back, just the entire area around. It feels like for as huge as this thing is, the amount of destruction going on is still a little bit more than it should be. And you're getting the sneaky suspicion that there's some sort of specialness about this thing as well that causes the area to break and reshape it around it. Uh, you were looking for a specific direction to be able to move it, yeah? Yep. You have picked up that if these two other Digimon hit at the same time, the Ancient moves in whatever direction they both hit, meaning they're both able to move it together at the same time. You get the feeling that there's no real way for it to slip and slide around the ground as well. Though. Okay, so it's too well grounded to be able to slip, but we can push it. It can be pushed with significant combined force. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Those two Digimon that are fighting it, they can make it move. We need to somehow corral them into getting into moving it where we want it to go. Can anyone talk to those Digimon? Is anyone able to get to them quickly and relay a message? Um, Gagamon's like, I can try? What was that? Oh, uh, aside, what was that program on Zen's computer that was keeping track of the, uh, the Lord of the Glacier? All right. Uh, while Nurukabimon is doing its vertical ascent, Zen hanging, like, one hand clutching onto the fur, other hand holding the laptop against the back of Nurukabimon and trying to check through it. It's a precarious position. Uh, I think Sorcerymon tries to do a little and be able to check over it. So the upper left program on Armor OS is a radar that's pinged out a couple of symbols. There's a central location for you. There's something that's uh, to the northeast, northwest. And there's another ping. Wait, no, you didn't have the radar... Did you have the radar originally? No, it wasn't the radar that was tracking the Lord of Glacier. It was your basic Digivice. Oh, huh. That's right. The first time you got a signal of that thing, it was after you met it, I believe. That would explain why we walked blindly into a cave into it. <laughs> uh, what are you specifically looking to do? Oh, I was just wondering if there was, like, a chat program. <laughs> I don't know. Something to, like, get its attention really quick. Make it a little easier for, uh, for Becca Gagamon to get over there. You don't specifically find a chat link towards it. Okay. However, as this battle is going on, uh, the Ancient lashes up its horns as the Lord of Glacier is swinging in. For a claw and Lord Blessy it kind of bounces back and then does a rebound off a momentary field of snowflakes in the air. It, like can create ice platforms to multi-jump through the air. But as it's doing one of this jump, the ancient roars and this big gust of snow and wind blows upwards, and the Lord goes up higher, 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 and then crashes down near to you guys, skidding through the snow as it flips itself over to ride itself digging its claws into the ground, raising its head with a growl. Oh, oh hey, big guy! Uh, what am I supposed to be telling it again? <laughs> it's moments from, like, launching itself forward before it hears you yell out, and it turns and it looks over you all gathered here. And there's a Hi. momentary look that considers you. We're here to help! Can you help? We're gonna try! 
We can't just do nothing. We wanted to then, yeah, and it kind of just shifts the shoulder towards you as if it's giving you a place to jump up on its back. All right, Mac Agamon's gonna go. Please say uh, you let Mac go of Agamon Derek first. Oh yeah, oh yeah, Derek put got put down in the snow. <laughs> okay, right, Derek, say, Derek ain't down right. for this. The Lord of the Glacier has offered you guys a lift into this fight. All right, um, maybe get him up to speed. <laughs> <laughs> now Jamal wants to go too. <laughs> All right, Choco's gonna go too. Then Choco's gonna go too. She's got to uh, close enough to I, bolster. Um, That's Clive true. is going to definitely refuse. Go, uh, Choco, Choco, it's not safe for you near that. Okay. I know we wanted to stick together, but I think it's gonna be safer if you just stay here. Okay, 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 okay. She's just gonna give him a hug before she lets him go to go. Climb on the Lord of Glacier's back. Okay, yeah, Clive's gonna hug back? back very, very tightly with 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 wings and with wing hugs and everything. Okay. All right. Um, before before Clive goes, is there any way? Um, because can I bolt him before he leaves? Very fragile. Um, I do have a move for regenerating. Can I? Leave a regenerate on Chioko to use if she gets hurt. Well, it's not a case of using it when it comes up; it runs out yeah, due it's, to its time. Because it's, 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 uh, it's uh, yeah, yeah, it's not going to last long okay. enough to this situation. All right, um, here's what I want to do instead, since I have all the humans gathered in one really convenient location. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to use Ethereal well, Resonance. Zen's still ascending with Nurikabemon. They're taking their time because it's bad All right, situation. Well, I have most up. of the humans. Yep. <laughs> um, I'm going to put Fury on them to increase their... Oh, well, that's accuracy and damage. I don't know how useful that's going to be. Never Well, hold also, on. It's I've got probably going to run Digimon out if they're not around. getting in combat themselves. Um, can Chioka put a bolster onto Clive before he goes? Yes. All right. All right, cool. I, What's I have the one most, quick. Uh, for Choco? Um, it's uh, what are you charisma, right? Yeah. Are um, you boosting accuracy or damage or dodge? Accuracy. And my charisma is so a, it's a direct for accuracy. Yeah. I, I, so I, I have a quick question. So we saw mm -hmm. that big, like, oh, further down the mountain, saw the big guy go up there, right? Yep. Am I actually climbing mountain, or am I still climbing handholds? Um, more like Sorcery One's helping with uh, their ability to create handholds for Nuri Kabamon to climb the mountain. You are working your way up the mountain. Slow going, though. But am I close enough to, to get Sorcery Mon up there by yeeting him, much like I cheated? <laughs> uh... So I'm not going to throw Zen yes, up there. That's a bad one. Is not willing to be thrown, which means oh. uh, what a baby. It's not really a situation. <laughs> they are helping you climb specifically. Fine, you can stay with us. All right. Uh, so Clive and Matt Galgamon are about to ride Lord of Glacier back out in the battle. Okay. Bridgemon, Vajramon, are you joining this in any way? Can you join this in any way? I think at least one Digimon should stay back. I know Fjordjimon's kind of more of a healer, and mm -hmm. that can be useful in battle, but Vajramon definitely has more uh, firepower than he does. Uh, I think Fjordjimon's going to keep base over here. Keep hold of that burger until Nurikabemon makes it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, the Lord of Glacier takes a moment sniffing and asks if they can have the burger. Well, all right. It's so tiny, though. Chomps it in one mouth. <laughs> Disappears that smell. But, you know, a little bit sat up. Sorry, uh, Nuri Kabamon, you snooze, you lose. <laughs> I got another one cooking for you, don't worry. Is Vatramon going to try and climb up the Lord of the Glacier or stay here? Yeah, on yeah, he sure. Uh, wants okay. to get those good stats. I think Mark Galgamon has to help Vajramon get up because it's quite as for big four-legged boy. 
Yeah, he's not quite built for this task. Okay, but nonetheless, you guys have managed climb onto the Lord Glacier, it takes a run back and gets ready to jump in. Has anyone briefed it on the specific That's situation? Or you're just saying yeah. you're going to help this fight? I think Clive would convey what was said if he was close enough to hear it. Okay, this is Clive, like, climbing towards the face and mention, hey, there's the concept of the chaos sealed beneath the Glacier. It's really bad if it breaks free. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um... He's gonna be like, we gotta keep, we gotta keep it away from and from over there. And he gestures vaguely. There's something buried deep in the ground, and if it's if this fight stays here, it's gonna be set th- free. I don't, I don't think we have much time left. And uh, if if that thing gets loose, it'll destroy much more than just the glacier. Okay, uh, I'm going to say make a bit check for persuasion. Okay. Just that, like, you are c- convincing this thing that this is a situation that's concerning to oh, so it. 3d6 plus 5, right? Yep. Come on, Clive. Yeah! Pretty solid. All right, Lord of Glacier pulls back, prepares to run, and step, step, step leap and just a rush of wind races over you guys you guys clench your grips on this the orbs that float around this thing are always like they kind of circle around it but slowly but they remain fixed in place around its body as well so you guys can kind of just keep passing off from one to the next but holding to them against the air unless you get a grip so this thing rockets through the sky at a ridiculous speed it bounces down, kind of just settles for a split second amongst the crack, snow, and earth down here, and then launches up again. And it strikes the Ancient from this side. At the same moment, the Knight strikes the Ancient from the other side, and they both hit it in the horn. There's this pulse of power inwards. This thing shakes its head around up, then down. And then it blows and a blizzard <laughs> of intense spirals out around it towards all in the way. Because the Lord of Glacier is shielding you guys, there will be a reduced roll, but you guys are about to get caught up in this all the same. So this thing is going to be using Absolute Blizzard. I'm back, sorry. <laughs> So I'm going to halve its accuracy and damage for that. So, start with a accuracy roll. Only one success! Fair enough, roll dodge, folks. Like all of us over here? Okay. Yep, all three of you. Okay, let me look at my Gokumon's dodge. 15 Seven. minutes remain. Oh, good golly. Okay. Seven plus I have agility. Okay. Okay. Fuck. Wait, no, I have agility and avoidance. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Oh, I have agility as well, so I'm going to roll that one. And Vajramon, roll your dodge too. Okay, I got two. I got two successes. That's going to give you a dodge. Yeah, one more. Two successes? All right. Three successes. All of you have successfully dodged. Very well done. Ooh. As the... Ice and steam snow spirals out. You see that there's a pulse of power around Lord Glacier's body that weakens its effect as it comes in, and you guys manage to push through that. Uh, the knight is continuing to strike of its own accord as the Lord of the Glacier is focusing on now attacking it in this direction to try and push it back towards this way. What are you guys doing in this situation? You've been brought in close here. It's very intense, high-speed movement. 
through the air as the Lord of Glacier just jumps from platform of snow to platform of snow to ground to mountaintop around here, trying to avoid the Ancients' attacks and push it back. Okay, okay, we gotta act quickly. Um, <clears throat> so the, which direction is the knight trying to push it into? The knight is striking it uh, from this side, kind of taking advantage of distraction that the Lord of Glacier is giving from left side. Okay. It would be best if the knight was striking from the same side, so you guys would have to back, but it appears more interested in looking for an advantage than pushing this thing around. Fair, fair enough. Um, I'm just, I'm just looking at this thing, trying to figure out what we should do. I mean, we should probably attack it. That makes sense, right? <laughs> um. Uh, just I mean, if you guys want to try and do a combo attack, with Lord of Glacier, to or do you want to try and deal with the knight in any way, or make use of it, or do you just want to combine your power with the Lord of the Glacier? I think that's a little knight gets closer or better off binding our power here, but uh, I do want to have Clive use uh, uh, Ethereal Resonance first. Mm -hmm. I, I want to I wanna point out it, Ethereal Resonance. <laughs> yeah. 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 There's a Nya in there. Very good. <laughs> got it, got it. All right, so you're going to try and buff those with you? Yep. Uh, so right. I've got seven accuracy plus whatever I got from Chiyoko. So plus six, it's... you have 13 accuracy. So 13 D6 greater than five. Um, and then also have, uh, I also have white. White mage, which just lets you choose the target. All right, yeah, so let's just... Us. Roll your 13d6. Nice. Four successes. All right, uh, each of you roll a dodge against... See if you get the buff or not. I also roll this boy's dodge. So that is two <laughs> rounds fury for Mark Galgamon. All right, and that does. So that's gonna be a that's gonna be a nice, nice, sexy plus five. Oh, nice. To accuracy and damage, right? Yep. Two turns. Nice. All right. Uh, that's one turn for Badramon. So just mark down that you've got the benefit of that. And meanwhile, Glacia uh, doesn't pick up on. Too strong. I kind of like the concept of that, that if you're so much stronger, you can't get easily buffed by those significantly less powerful than you because the accurate dodge difference. Yeah, that does make like, sense. Like, thematically, that's kind of cool. But, uh, yeah. Vajramon and Makgalgawan, you have just hit up with strength All right. as the Lord of Glacier is swinging back for an attack. Are you going to try and hold it for a second? Are you going to try and uh... Direct the knight to try and assist, or are you going to go all in right away? Or something else? Tell me what's your thing. Um, Ten minutes. Matt, Matt Gagamon's been looking at this thing, and he sees that big sparkly thing on like the top of its back. Yep. And his, his little tiny brain is like, that looks important, what if I break it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he's going to try and hit it. All right. You're just going at that on your own, or are you calling out for the others' attention to it? Yeah, he's going to be like, hey, look, the, the big sparkly thing on its back. What if we smash it? That looks important. Is it the blue thing? Yeah. Is that not an eyeball? I have just assumed it's an eyeball. I thought it was like a gem. Uh, there's no iris or any sort of movement in it from what you it looks like a shiny, bright blue gem on the back. Okay, it's probably a gem. I thought it was an eyeball. I thought it was an eyeball this time. <laughs> I, I can see that, but <laughs> I do yeah, think it's okay. a big crystal. Hearing your idea, the Lord of Glacier kind of launches in closer towards its base instead of the outer horns, where it's 
hitting it to try and shift it around, grabs on both claws on the inside of the horns and basically positions its back so that you guys have a straight shot right at that gem. All right, let's Ooh. get this a go. All right, what are you guys attacking with? Um, I would like to use Yalas yeah, Jilaro. Yes, you do that first, and then I'll I'll come in All after. Right, Clive, give us your first attack. All right, so that's gonna be uh, seven plus the five. Wait, I do I get by my? I don't wait. Hold on, that didn't buff me, did it? No, I didn't. No. All right, so that's gonna be seven. Difficult to buff yourself. What? It's difficult to buff. Yeah, it's mostly just stances. Yeah. Three successes. Okay, well, yeah. I'll tell you right now, the Ancient has a dodge of one, so you're going to be hitting it all the same. <laughs> all right, oh. well, I have, I have Peer also. Well, I guess it's technically elemental terrain for it, so it has a dodge of three. All right, well, I've still got Pierce, though. So that ignores some armor, right? Yeah, two. It ignores two armor. How good is your dodge, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> so you ignore two armor. Yeah. And what's your attack? Um, uh, my damage is usually seven, but oh yeah, yeah, it's it's seven. It's seven. So ten going at. Well, effectively twelve going at armor because <laughs> you're ignoring two of it. Yeah. All well, right. no, no, it's wait, why twelve? Well, I'm saying. Be Seven Basically, three, because 10, no. well, because you're ignoring two of its armor. Oh yeah. Okay, okay. So since you're at the ultimate level, you ignore greater immunity, which is damage dealt by opponents below ultimate level can be reduced to zero by armor. So uh, you just have to get through its. Uh, uh, um, it takes one wound box of damage. You don't want to know what its armor stat is, but the point that you're attacking specifically. You see that it hits it, and there is an effect on it. It's like a burst of sparks. It's not a crack so much, but you can tell just instinctively that hitting that had... All right, rest of you guys, roll your stuff. Um, okay, I'm going to use... Um... I'm going to have to use Mox Spiral. I got right. to charge at it. All right. So I have. Give that roll. I have nine. I have fourteen Don't accuracy. Don't to use your modifiers. Yes. Oh yes. Okay. So I have that is a missile melee attack. So actually, that is a sixteen. I have sixteen to six. Holy sick! Holy shit! I said holy sick. Holy six. six. Team. Holy <laughs> Actually, oh, actually, you know what? I'm going all in. I'm going to use Chrome Digizoid weapon as well. So that's oh, yeah. 18. Oh, yeah. Now we're all good on those 18. Oh. <laughs> God, please. 18 Zero successes. <laughs> I will cry. I do have huge power and overkill, so I can reroll. But here we go. 18d6. 18 threes. Three successes, but I have a bunch of ones and twos. Let's okay, see, one, one, two, 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 three, four, five, six, seven, eight, so, nine. Is that nine? I thought it was ten. No, I, yeah, there's, I can count mm -hmm. ten. Okay, ten d six greater than five. There we go. Right. Holy successes. shit! Oh, Hell yeah! Oh my! Oh my six! <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let me. So ten successes plus your damage. My damage currently is. 15, too, right? 16 damage. All right. So you just go flying forward and you sink your fist right into the middle of that blue gem and you feel just the slightest give and then a spider web of crack runs out along it. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, God, I don't even know like where he is in like... You like are on the back to... of the Lord of Glacier, who is hanging onto the face of this thing. You are basically at the midpoint of these two horns. Okay. Um, can he hit that 
gem thing with his big sword? Like, can he reach it from where he is? Uh, you'd have to use the movement. If you jumped and then, like, used your at melee attack, you could get it for sure. Okay, yeah. Because you've got reach as well, don't you? Yeah. So I guess yeah. he's going to do oh, that. Pull a Wind Waker Link. Stab him right in the forehead. Go for it. <laughs> Not the forehead. We're aiming for his back hump. Back don't forehead. Don't forget to <laughs> add the benefit of Fury, and don't forget your modifiers. Okay, um... Three minutes, what 20 Fury... seconds. <laughs> Fury gives you a plus I, five to your accuracy I, and damage. I literally... What am I... Plus I, five to accuracy. Plus too five many damage. numbers. What am I doing? <laughs> You hit the checkboxes um, on close combat and prone digizoid for your attack modifiers. Yeah. Then in the stats block, you add five to accuracy and damage. And hold on, where? where? There's a stats block where your health, accuracy, damage, dodge, and armor are. Okay, yeah. And you can see some boxes on the right side of that where you can enter numbers yourself. Yeah. And you add five to your accuracy and damage there, so they go up to 11 and 12. Is it are you using are you using Rhoda or Baljan? Um, I guess Baljan. Yeah. Okay. So if you hit the um, target symbol on the far right of that, it tells you about that attack. So combining close combat, Chrome Digizoid, and your accuracy, you've got a fifteen d six accuracy. Uh, 15? Yeah. I have, I must have missed something because I'm not... You have a 6 accuracy normally, right? Um, hold on, let me... Um... Hold on. <laughs> okay, that would help. For some reason, I had elemental terrain still on, but that uh, is not correct. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right, let me try that again. Decent. Um, okay, so I see 11 accuracy, 12 damage. What am I yeah, still... but you've got close combat and chrome digizoid as well. They don't automatically yeah, get added to both it. Of those. Yeah, so that'll put you up to 15. Well, uh, okay. Because they each add two accuracy. So you go from 11 to 15. Okay. And chrome adds one to damage, 13 damage. Um, okay, sure. um, so I'm rolling 15 accuracy. Yep. Break its weird back, I think. Do you have the huge power thingies? Uh, um, no, Vajramon yeah. doesn't. Hmm. Okay. So you also have seven strike, which will negate one dodge. For that. So five successes plus your damage of thirteen for eighteen points of damage. All right. So as Mark Galgamon just pulls away from this spider web, Vajramon jumps, jumps forward with one of the blades and hits the gem, and it gives inwards, and then it shatters in flying shards of blue that turn to red and then burn away into dark. And as that happens, there's a sudden shift of movement as the ancient begins sinking into the ground. It's not being supported by the ice like it was moments before. And as much as it's thrashing around, as it's sinking in the ground, it's unable to give the same amount of movement that gave it the strength it had before to break things. Mac Agamon's like, oh my god, they're what? Vajramon is just like, yeah! Like, both swords in the air, triumphantly. We did something! Because it was on me, I paused the timer for a second while I was explaining the system and then started again. It is paused again now at 31 seconds. Oh! 
Oh, golly. Megaturion has taken three hits to the gem that was supporting its ability to manipulate and stay in the eye. Sunk right now, and it is very unhappy. Oh my god, I can't believe that worked. What? As the Lord of the Glacier just, um, pulls itself back up on top of this head, as the thing is kind of like sinking down, it's the ancient is more concerned with trying to pull itself up than fighting anything at the moment. And the knight has circled overhead to inspect the situation because it's interested in the sudden weakness, not attacking for the moment as Lord of Glacier pulls itself up towards where you both are and just calls out, get on. Right, all right. That Gagamon's gonna hop back on. Five, five is there. All right. As you guys and Vatramon gets back on as well. Uh, yeah, guess so. All right. Lord of Glacier hauls back, takes another, just turns around, takes a big leap off the head of this nearby mountainside, digs its claws into it, so it can see and look. As the ancient is sinking more, this knight has circled around and seen this broken gem, and it's going pull back its sword and go for a blade of the dragon king coup de gras. which is melee damage pass life steal charge counter and drinking his soul thing just pulls back and is about to Yummy. go for exactly what it do and as it does this the ancient is also getting cranky and it's going to mode change swap its damage and armor stat. So it's uh, going to go from uh, 12 damage, 32 armor, to 26 damage, 18 armor. 32 armor! This thing suddenly pulses, and this wave of snow blurs up around, and it is opening its mouth, and it is very angry, and the knight powers up and flies towards it. So... Let's see how this big meeting of attacks is going to go. I'm interested in this. Uh, both of them are setting off burst power for this. So this is going to be a climactic moment to either way it goes. Burst. They're both, in, they're both incinerated completely. The end. Let's, oh, this thing has Hunter specifically geared to taking this thing out. That's right. This is going to be fun. All right. So let's start. Ding, 17. My God. Okay. You all want to see some numbers? Yep. Yeah, dude. Okay. Well, absolutely. Here comes the accuracy roll for the Black Knight. Oh, hello? But what about a giant Excuse power? Me? Does it have, uh, it doesn't have huge power? It does not have either of those. Oh, still 12 successes. Uh, it has the Hunter and Slayer abilities specifically geared towards this thing. Which means it gets to add its RAM, CPU, and bit to agility, to accuracy. Ooh, Jesus. Yeah, no, this thing is specifically it was specifically raised up to take out the ancient. You know, you did a great job, honey. You're doing great, sweetheart. Okay, so the dodge for the ancient is a little buffed as well because it also uses first power. But it doesn't have the greatest dodge. Nope, two successes. Do I ignore any of those? I don't think so, but I do believe I ignore some armor with this. Because uh, of obsidian weapon, it ignores two points of armor, so it's going to ignore eight armor, which means the ancient only applies. 
14 armor. Oh, to only an 14 attack armor. Of... We gotta add this damage though, because this is where it gets real. Uh, anything else adding to that? Okay, so that is uh, damage 16 as it just bursts through and it ignores four, uh, ignores eight armor. So ultimately, this huge attack that hits it right now only adds up to damage. That's so funny. The ancient is so. How much? Hold on. How much did it? A two. Oh. 16 damage wow. versus 14 armor. Wow. I mean, the Ancient is specifically stronger. Like, the Ancient is burst 3, and the Knight is burst 1. So it adds up. But you know what? It's not oh, just about that. Because it must have been having hit. a field day with the Builder. Yeah, no, this was the point of making ridiculous things and seeing how you guys would move them. And you guys did move this thing. I mean, this thing specifically hit a weak point, so I'm not even... In enthused to apply all the armor. The main thing to point about, out about this is that the special ability of Slayer isn't going to trigger off of it. I thought, you know, there's possibilities of how it'll add it up. Uh, the special effect of Slayer is... So, if the combination of Hunter and Slayer matches exactly to a target Digimon, and after this attack deals damage to the target, target has less than half health remaining, target is immediately destroyed. Good. Now, that's something interesting to debate, because I don't know how much damage is flinging around for this entire battle where they've been going through. So... Well, it depends. Does it have the terrain thing where it can take zero from an attack, or have they been at least dealing one damage every time? They've been dealing one damage each time, is the thing. Let's do some interesting numbers here. Uh... <laughs> I want one of you to roll a 1d20. Uh, a which? A uh, 1d20. Okay, Just a I can do that. D20. All right. We're going to do some interesting things here to figure out how this battle has been going so far. 17? 17. That means of its 20 wound boxes, the Lord of the Glacier has been reduced down to three. Oh. oh. That also means that uh, similarly has happened the others. The knight has taken seven down to seven, and the ancient has taken seventeen. Now, from the attacks you guys have done so far, combined with that attack, it's five down. So I'm going to reduce it by seventeen. Twelve, thirteen, seventeen. That brings it down to twenty-eight of fifty, just above half health. Slayer doesn't trigger. But the knight has still burst through this thing. The ancient is sinking into the earth and it is severely injured. And as it sinks, you can see that the ice is starting to wrap around it and getting itself in it. In this instant, it looks like the ancient is retreating in this situation taken enough damage that for the first time in the solid state glacier the ancient's destructive path has been put to a stop the ancient attacked at the same time that the knight attacked hell and for the ancient significant power as well i don't think the knight has come out of this very well i don't want to play out this attack a lot of knights. I think the knight, let's see this. The knight, with its full blade out, charged right into the hit the broken point in the center of the ancient gem that you guys exposed, and it disappeared into its body, and it didn't come back out. Uh, ew. But oh, the no. ancient is being cocooned by ice and is wrapping up and is sinking into the ground as well. It has been significantly damaged and as the Lord of Glacier kind of just is clutching onto the mountainside but you can tell by the way it's breathing it does not have any give left in it 
you get the feeling that this grand conflict come to not so much a stop in the entire history of the glacier, but a pause. However long it's going to take the ancient to recover from this damage, however much time is going to pass, one day as the ancient sinks beneath the earth, you get the feeling that it will return, but for the moment it still sinks beneath. The numbers could have gone any which way. It was possible for this knight to have struck the final blow with its design for it, but the plan behind it was maybe a little too slow or maybe the action too strong, but this is the situation. This is a moment in time, a freeze frame, where all of you are in this situation, able to consider what's going on. Is there anything any of you want to do to try and affect this situation, or are you just going to let it conclude as it is right now? Um, I, I realize it's probably a little too late for this, but I did have Flurry. <laughs> could have done another attack. <laughs> you could have done one more attack in just that yeah. brief moment you were all working together. And I'd say that amounted to one more wound box that brought the ancient 27 of 50. If we could get two more points, we could have saved the night. <laughs> Vajramon also had Flurry, so Vajramon also could have done one. Yeah, I'm just thinking like he had to jump up to do his attack the first time, so I yeah. don't know if like, it would have worked. Just, um, I did think of that. Well, I mean, it's within one turn. It's within one attack. So you, like, you jump to attack, Flurry is like an immediate bone attack. Mm -hmm. But it also probably would have just been one more damage. Is that enough? Yeah. Well, it's at 26 of 50 now. Did any of you do anything more retrospectively before the knight made its final big attack? Clive has, uh, has counter, but um, I don't think it, it attacked, so it can't really yeah, attack. It didn't attack us, because I've got yeah. counter as well. Well, with that, the ancient sinks beneath the earth and the ice entombs it and it disappears beneath the snow to the rest until the next sniper rifle and... <laughs> <laughs> I grandma's yeet. not going to allow it I eat sorcery mom 60, at it no scope. <laughs> uh, through its heavy breathing Lord of the Glacier looks over the situation and there's a small mutter that the three of you close enough pick up that's just till the next time. And it hauls itself up further and it takes one more flying leap over here just as Nurikabimon is climbing up to the top of this mountaintop. Yeah, what we miss? <laughs> <laughs> we have... Ah! Uh, all of the humans just from like... this point had vision. Like, you guys saw this entire thing play out. Yeah. Mac Algamon's just like gonna give out a victory howl because we did effectively, at least temporarily, win this. Yeah. Well, I'm just gonna leap down, pick up Chioko, and spin her around. Wait, you did it! You guys did it! She's so excited. She's she's just like. Clive's got this big smile. Nuri Kabamon's just pushing Sorcery Mon out of. Well, I guess Sorcery Mon's still clinging to him, but he's here for his burger. Sorcery Mon on the top is like gonna move. Sorcery Mon very much like in this situation is like, wow, that got out of hand. I can't believe Mac Algamon is just like, Derek, Derek, I had a good idea. You did. It was weird. Yeah, right? I'm glad they're on the same page with this. <laughs> Yeah, no, Mac Algamon. Like, I don't know. The Lord, like, of the just, Lord of the Glacier just float. Float time. Big cat. Big cat. Choco is, like, after Clive stops spinning her around, is going to, like, turn to the Lord of the Glacier and do, like, a bow and be like, thank you so much for, for that, for helping, for us, for, like, giving us the ability to help. Like, you know, she's just, like, she's tripping over her words a little bit, like, Usually this is her thing, but there's just everything has happened so very much. As you go up to him, just starts 
looking. It's like it has eyes closed from it, but it opens one to look over you. And there's a brief hint of a chuckle. It's like you were all so small, so brave. What interesting <laughs> things. <laughs> Thank you. We, we do our best. Oh. oh my god, I kind of like that worked. <laughs> so what do we really mark did that down with that. on our survey? Is this kind of safe or not? Um, I'm gonna say no. Yeah. I'm gonna Put get a big caution. Back. Big caution sign, like a, it should be, unless the ground starts to rumble, because there's a giant <laughs> sheep. Safe until the moment it's extremely not. Yes. Yeah, it's like safe for now, but the general impression is if that thing wakes up and starts going again, especially in this location, probably bad unless there's a way to further improve the seal on the concept. But you know it's there. You can mm -hmm. report back to base. And you've Everything. made contact with the Guardians down there. Maybe in the amount of time the action is sealed here, the Surveillance Corp can pull its resources to make that barrier 100%. Yeah. It's yeah. completely within the realm of possibility. That, like, you guys have bought time, but you've bought time to maybe make it safe. Yeah. Unless the Ancient rolls really well on its rest check. <laughs> <laughs> Just off shit next day. All right, well, let me just give it its health check. Um, 24d6 greater than 5. <laughs> oh, it's fine. It's going to be out for a while. It took a little more than just wound box damage. You guys breaking its ability to manipulate the snow and ice. Yeah. I, I'm just, I'm sitting here like I've never had a good idea once before in my whole life <laughs> until now. <laughs> All and right. it took guys, to do it. Do you guys want to tell me a little about what you guys want out of however much longer you spend in the Solid State Place here? Like, is this it? You guys peaked it. Time to head back, or are you going to take a little more time to explore around a bit now? Um, can I retroactively be like, yeah, Eleanor filmed the whole thing with her shitty digital camera. Absolutely. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yes. Um, Chioka's probably, like, before we end up leaving, Chioka's probably going to want to go back up to the sanctuary and tell them what happened. All right. Uh, oh, so jumping point. forward to that, you guys take a visit to the sanctuary again. And there you learn that the sanctuary is actually where that Digimon, the night Digimon, came from. They oh. were preparing a power to fight against the ancients in there that was created by a cross-digivolution of all of the resting Dorumon and Dorugreymon that were beneath the temple. Oh, oh, they've all died! So, big red dragon boy that Zen met. Its digivolved form was that Black Knight. Oh. oh. But I'll come back one day. What? Inside him. Just 1,000 mm. tiny Dorumon eggs hatch at once. The priest Anjumon is sad that the situation did not end more favorably. They were hoping that with this power that they all combined together, that the ancient periodic destruction and rebuilding of the Soul State Glacier would finally come to a halt. But the battle ended not in a loss for them, but in an unfortunate tie. Yeah, it was kind of like a... But don't worry, that victory. they'll That's come back later as some horrifying fusion. Choco was going to express her condolences and also reassure them that the night was very cool and was doing a great job. It's appreciated to hear that. Yeah, he was very, very strong. We definitely wouldn't have been able to do what we did without him. It was... Uh, our powers, your powers, and the power of the Lord of the Glacier all working together that we managed to stop temporarily. Uh, Zen. Yep. Uh, 
while the Lord of Glacier was resting, I'm going to take a shot that you took another stab at it with your Digivice, trying to see yeah. if you could get some data off of it. Yep. The Chaos Guard program actually gives you an uh, information screen on this, like a summary for it. It seems to have upgraded some of the capacity of your computer that allows Ooh. you to register and understand Digimon. And it prints out, you know, this is a ancient, very mighty Digimon by the name of Baihumon. Hmm. And there's a surprisingly, like, there's a brief about one page history of it being basically a incarnation of the solid state glacier, that the solid state glacier's datascape basically created a digital guardian for it. So this environment in a living computer way, produce this as its main defender. And so Aww. the actual information has been revealed to you that this Digimon is basically kind of the spirit of this entire region. Damn. Aww. Dope. You guys have learned some interesting stuff about a lot of the Digimon here, the environment, some dangerous things here. You've made contact with Snowhearth Village which is, the buildings got a little knocked over just by the presence of this, but the area itself get really stepped on by the ancient heading through, which means that the villagers just set back to rebuilding there. You guys were sent to the Solid State Glacier to explore, to map, to learn. You have explored across the northern reaches of it. You know that there's more across the Sea of Stillness south but that's maybe for another time maybe for another team we've made contacts in what's the name of the temple what did i call it the sanctuary yeah i think it was just the sanctuary but i could the be frost wind sanctuary there it is so you made contacts in the frost wind sanctuary and the snow hearth village they both appreciate you sorcery mon mentions that they're just going to be heading out from this area now back to maybe not less dangerous location but a different dangerous location had enough of this place for now and there's not a mu much they can pursue in their study because those guardians were very clear that if sorcery mon tried investigating that barrier they were going to remove it from reality oh <laughs> those exact words sorcery mon repeats like i'm not going to do that that sounds like a bad harsh. idea. I think Eleanor would make uh, Vajramon help rebuild the village. You're big and beefy. You can help. You can lift heavy. Oh, God. So do you guys, like, spend a couple of days at the village just making contact, building up? Yeah, that sounds, that sounds good. Help them get back on their feet. Yeah. All right. I think if uh, before we had left the battle area, there's no way that, like, that Digmon's lost to time, right? Uh, <laughs> who wants to spearhead the search for this Digmon? I forget, do I still have Tracker in this form? <laughs> I mean, it's time is passing now. You can be in whatever form you want. Yeah, maybe one day, just when the weather is, like, clear, Zen and uh, Inuman go out looking. If anyone else came with, that's fine, but you know what? Maybe we should try and find that guy. Yeah, uh, Gal Galmon would probably go with because he's always up for adventure. <laughs> okay. Uh, Zen and Inumon, do you want to do a combined skill check for this one? Sure. sure. How's that Okay, work? so... The skill to for Zen to find this would be I want to say it's either perception or survival for Zen and your survival is higher because it's your intelligence stat so you get to add plus 7 to that whereas your perception is plus 6 right. and Inumon uses tracker which when it's performed actually no you'd want to use Probably your perception copy. check because, yeah. well, does Inukabe Mon have tracker? Yep. Nurikabe doesn't, but Inukabe does. As so, long as he's on four legs, he can smell good. 
Tracker lets you add your brain stat in place of bit to perception check. And for a combined check, you'd be able to add your brain stat to Zen's check. Hey, I have eight brains as Inukave. Yeah, so if Zen does a perception check, which is a plus six, you can add plus eight to that. So that's actually... 24. Damn. Uh, 24 to... I'm going to flip a coin on this. Uh, do you want to call it? Oh. Uh, heads. All right. One is tails, two is heads. Mm -hmm. You spend a while searching, but this Digmon suit doesn't show up. The only relic of Digmon you guys have is the arm stills holding on to That's not the arm from the same one, though, right? <laughs> no, it's a different one. Okay. I think it's a... the one still a punch. Right. Zen's not much, usually much for sentimentality, but I think she, like, feels a little sad. Uh, I don't think she has anything to make, like, a marker or something, like a memorial site, but... I don't know. She just feels sad about it. I think uh, Eleanor would help make some kind of memorial. I think she, Eleanor, like, gets. I think last time, Chioka would help, too, if Zen said anything. <laughs> Can guys, actually can Zen yep. make like a digital like a data ping spot? Sure. Sure, you have synced up to this one before. Yeah, just like a data ping spot. That, like uh, a, if so someone just else in this were to come general down. wreckage area, you leave a data point about the bravest Digmon that helped save Zen's life. Yep. <laughs> right. Technically, I mean, you can put data pings that link to memes just anywhere. You can spread memes across the digital world, this is true. Technically, oh, the Digmon shit. saved your life twice, because that way I had a test before I tried to throw this end to the top of the cliff. God. It wasn't a good idea, but... <laughs> Does Bakumon feel any amount of guilt for this situation? <laughs> nope. <laughs> he does not. Fantastic. <laughs> Alright. Listen, your hands Is there anything are... you guys would like to learn, ask about Solid State Lacey or in other ways say or do before you return to the world? Nah, Derek's good to go. He honestly has probably been good to go for a while. But... <laughs> when What's we up, get Eleanor? back, I've got a great hot chocolate recipe. Anybody? Anybody? Oh please! I feel like I feel like this cold is going to be a part of me forever at this point. Can the did you want to come with? Can they come through? Can we invite them on to hot chocolate? Uh, your partner Digimon can come through, but others can't easily manifest or can't go through the transport system back. Okay, as long as our partners can get through. Yeah. All right, rounding up, you guys activate the signals that connect back to. Corp and send out the message and one by one you are each teleported back through the digital layers between this world and human world and emerge on the other side your surveillance mission complete everyone's healthy alive learned you've had a lot of crazy experiences that you're ready to report and for now that's where we'll bring this mission of the surveillance corp to a close good job who's ready for paperwork <laughs> Not me, but we have to! <laughs> Surely they won't deny me a gun a fifth time. <laughs> I feel like you deserve a gun! <laughs> At this point, yeah. Really. Oh, I would you even take, that I'd gun. take a, I'll take a nerf gun. <laughs> we can work on it. If Zen wanted to, Zen could have like something way better than a gun right now. <laughs> you can you can take a nerf gun and then you take it in there with you, you can hack it into a real gun, right? That's how that works? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Chip, gun hacked. <laughs> well, some I plans mean. to make for next time. <laughs> okay. Alright guys, it's been a long and winding journey. We went many different places, but you guys faced a crazy situation and you made it work out. Oh my god, that was so much fun. I'm gonna that stop the so recording now. Remember the, remember the campaign where we all died?
Glad that didn't happen this time. It could have. Oh, we did so good. None of us died. Yeah. I, I did. I wasn't I, even I'm doing for my that, best guys. to balance it to make it intense but and scary, but not like lethal immediately. And this one worked out.